Namaste angels. I'm going to do my new moon in Aries video. Um, and the new moon begins on March 27th. Here's the thing. <laughs> um, March 27th is also the same day that Mercury enters retrograde. So I'm doing the reading a little bit differently. I figured I'd better go over with these retrogrades with you again, because although new moons are always about new beginnings and we should be from now, if we haven't started already, completing any projects, you know, that we possibly can or anything that we can get on target to be completed or to complete itself. Um, we should be doing that now, like tying up loose ends, any, anything you can tie, tie it. Um, so that you can start brand new on the 27th and with the energy of Aries, it should be a, you know, fiery, passionate, new beginning stuff you want to do, you know, people you want to do places you want to do that type of thing. However, <laughs> what can throw us for a loop are these retrogrades, right? So I, I mean, I suppose I could have told you a bunch of stuff about how beautiful a new moon can be, or even looked up something. Um, you know, that somebody had written that sort of shared my sentiments or whatever, um, like I sometimes do. But no, I said, you know what, I got to go over the retrogrades again. And that was reaffirmed when I pulled out, because I also pulled out random cards. I don't even have my energy deck here, which is what I usually use for the moon readings. Um, I wasn't moved to pull it out. I pulled out my four agreements cards, um, in addition to some others here. And this card came out right away. I think it may have something to do with Mercury retrograde, which again is the same day as the new moon. The problem with making assumptions is that we believe that they are the truth. We make an assumption, we misunderstand, we take it personally. Then we react by sending emotional poison with our word. This creates a whole big drama for nothing. If this doesn't sound like Mercury, Mercury retrograde, I don't know what does. So that made me feel like, yeah, you're doing the right thing. So I went to www.findyourfate.com because they have um, all of the retrogrades listed. I've been to this site before for this purpose. And beginning with Mercury retrograde, Mercury takes about 88 days to do one complete revolution around the sun. Mercury moves into retrograde three times per year for anywhere between 19 to 24 days. When Mercury goes retrograde, mistakes, misunderstandings, problems in communication, like that, I just read you, um, and transportation also, which I'm starting with the chariot, okay, ironically. Transportation also can be a problem when um, Mercury is in retrograde. And it not only <laughs> can be, it says likely, do not sign contracts or buy new items nor begin new projects. So how do you go into new moon and not begin new projects? I think we're just going to have to allow what begins to begin, but we're going to have to, again, start the process now, like anything that we can tie up, tie it up and, and let it complete itself naturally. Um, if it can. All right. So do not start new projects. It's an excellent time, however, to plan research and to prepare for something that will happen later. So this is very like conflicting and contradictory to new moon energy. Um, but it does happen again on what's well, actually, actually it's the Mercury shadow. Okay. It goes into, it enters its RX zone. However, during the period of the new moon energy, cause it lasts for about two weeks, these moon phases, the new moons and the full moons, they always last about two weeks and then you happen upon the next one. So around two weeks from now, uh, or from this, the, the date of the new moon, we'll be having the full moon, which I believe is in Libra um, this month. I think it's April 11th. Before then, however, while we're still in this new moon energy, on April 9th, Mercury goes into full on retrograde. So again, on um, the 27th, Mercury enters its RX zone in Aries, and then it goes full retrograde at 7.04 p.m. at 4 degrees Taurus 51 on April 9th, 2017. That's not all, however. Venus, as we know, is also in retrograde. 
Venus takes 225 days to do a complete revolution around the sun and is stationary for somewhere between a few hours or three to four days. Venus moves into retrograde every 18 months or so and then stays that way for about six weeks. When Venus goes retrograde, money and love are reviewed and old relations could return to resume or to be completed. New love relationships may produce a change of heart when Venus goes direct. Investments done during the retrograde phase of Venus could lose in value. So Venus is in retrograde. It entered on March 4th and it remains that way. It doesn't go direct until April 15th. April 15th, by the way, Holy Saturday. And tax day um, in the United States. So since it's a Saturday, I guess the following... Um, Monday would be the day that our taxes have to be in, likely. Have to be postmarked by. Um, Mars retrograde will not affect us, but Jupiter will. Jupiter takes around 12 years to do a complete revolution around the sun. Jupiter goes retrograde every year for around 120 days. When Jupiter goes retrograde, it's a good time to review our visions, ideals, and our belief systems in life. So this is why... Uh, many, particularly the masculine, are right now struggling with, you know, some of the things that they were in, the, that has been ingrained in them, some of the um, ideology and belief systems with which they've been raised. How do I stray from that? I, I'm, you know, but I don't feel comfortable in it anymore. That's a lot has to do with Jupiter retrograde. It forces you to review your visions, ideals, and belief systems. That's what it does. So anyway, it went into retrograde on February 6th, and it's going to still be there during the time of this new moon because it doesn't come out, doesn't go direct until June 9th, which is also the same day as the full moon, the full honey moon. Um, or some people may call it the strawberry moon. Saturn retrograde will perhaps affect us. Saturn takes around 29.5 years to do a complete revolution around the sun. Saturn goes into retrograde every year for around 140 days. When Saturn goes retrograde, it's a good time to revisit our relationships, work on long-term goals, responsibilities, and duties. It's also time to restructure the way we manifest our reality and to find a new attitude toward obstacles. Well, Saturn entered its RX zone on December 30th, 2016, and it's been there in Sagittarius all that time. It will remain there, but go into retrograde on April 5th. So again, during the period which this reading will cover um, and the new moon energy will cover, April 5th, we'll be <laughs> visiting relationships and working on long-term goals and responsibilities. So I mean, I guess that, that fits a little better than some of the others have. Um, Uranus, we don't have to worry about until the energy of the full moon. So I'll come back to that when our next moon reading. Neptune is in its RX zone. So, you know, shadow as well. You know, we may or may not be affected by this. Neptune takes about 164 days or like 11 years to do a complete revolution around the sun thus spending about 14 years in each sign of the zodiac. Neptune moves into retrograde approximately every year for around 150 days. When Neptune goes retrograde, our spirituality, inner tranquility, and visions become the focus. So this is similar to Jupiter in that sense. It entered its um, RX zone on February 23rd, 2017, and will remain that way and go full retrograde on June 16th. So Jupiter's going to come out, Neptune's going to go in, again, around similar parameters and focus. Lastly, Pluto is another that we may not have to worry about until the full moon. That's when it goes full retrograde. However, it is in shadow right now, so we could. We could encounter this energy. Pluto takes 248 years to do a complete revolution around the sun, thus spending on average about 21 years in each sign of the zodiac. Pluto moves into retrograde approximately every year for five to six months. When Pluto goes retrograde, it's a good time to reflect on how we're doing with change and transformation. Pluto 
entered its RX zone or its shadow on December 29th, 2016 in Capricorn. It has remained there and will continue to remain there, but will go full retrograde April 20th. So we'll revisit this one as well with the full moon reading. And with that, I'm going to get to our new moon reading. Again, beginning with the chariot, which can very well be about moving movement, transportation, um, victory. The chariot with Archangel Metatron, an important achievement, self-discipline and willpower or public recognition or and public recognition. Opening to the four of fire, which I saw many times as I was shuffling, by the way. Contentment, peace and abundance, a happy home life and the successful completion of a project. Four of fire back. Bring to the nine of fire. Don't give up. Protect that which you've created. Have courage and believe in yourself. So the nine of fire, of course, our warrior spirit indicates that our patience may be wearing down, wearing thin, um, but we're still in the fight and makes sense to be here for an Aries reading. Four of fire back. It's the ace of air. This might be here because of Mercury. Brilliant new ideas and inspirations. Seeing the truth of a situation and maybe a challenging beginning. Four fire back. And it's the moon with Archangel Haniel. Important psychic insights. Events behind the scenes. Release fears that hold you back. Always nice to see the moon for our moon reading, and we always do. The moon represents the sign of Pisces, but um, can represent any water sign and can represent the moon, as I believe it does this sign. I'm going to cut on that note. And it's Aries himself, the emperor with Archangel Michael, organization and logic, structure and discipline and leadership. Very appropriate. And isn't it cool how it came right on the heels of the moon? And this is the Aries moon. The overall energy is the king of water who is trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice and charity work, which is love. Masculine is the seven of water, a complex decision, the need to do research, stop procrastinating. Surrounded by the queen of water, who's tenderhearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your, trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. Like uh, the king of water, the queen of, and the moon, the queen of water can be a Pisces a Scorpio, or a Cancer, or somebody else taking on that energy. And in the masculine, <laughs> so they all seem to be taking on this energy. All three of their cards are of the water element. That means like love, emotions, things they're going through. Um, the the uh, subconscious is the four of water, missing an opportunity, discontentment, or boredom. Open your eyes to the possibilities. And feminine is strength with Archangel Ariel, representing the sign of Leo, but can be any other uh, fire sign as well. So maybe Aries or Sagittarius. Um, great and a strength. Release harsh judgments and extend some forgiveness and compassion, if you may. 
surrounded by the Knight of Fire, who's passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. So here's our Aries again, Sagittarius or Leo. With the in the feminine subconscious, the nine of water, your wish comes true, concerns fade away, a love of life. This is a yes, a resounding yes from spirit in the minor arcana. Crowning, wow, that four of fire is back. Contentment, peace, and abundance, and a happy home life, the successful completion of a project. Right away, I'm seeing where that's perhaps in limbo for some, they're not sure what's going on. The feminine having the strength to, you know, await a definitive answer, a definitive plan from the masculine, and he'll get to it, obviously. At, very nice, at the root, the six of water, memories from your history or childhood, issues regarding children also a possibility, and maybe even romanticizing the past. This can be the Venus retrograde um, guiding us to, yeah, deal with children and or past relationships and wrap those up or continue them and or this can be you know related to our divine unions the six of water is certainly considered the um like you know soulmate or past life relationship card of the minor arcana water and emotions cards can often have to do with children however and for me particularly the six the ace and the ten do at the heart of the matter, it's the moon. I love it. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, and re uh, we need to release fears that hold us back. I think the, from what I can see here, the only fear um, that anyone has, it's the masculine. You know, if anyone's fearful because he's got this decision to make and that's maybe weighing on him and he's got an offer to make or an offer to consider, um, maybe, and he might be fearful of that. But everything else is quite positive here. So with that, of course, it's upside down. I'm going to try to clarify with my butterfly cards, um, which are all about life changes, also beginning with moving. So similar to how I began with the chariot uh, from the angel tarot, and that's an energy that can very well um, be about moving. I think for many it is. This can be about moving too, moving into a new home or moving into a new relationship, moving into commitment. Um, moving again. <laughs> I think people are changing jobs, like all kinds of stuff is happening. Join in. This is where we consciously, intentionally make a decision to, you know, into a commitment maybe, to, to join in to something, to move forward. Moving back. Opening out to be true to you. So if, for example, the masculine's decision or whether or not to make or accept an offer has to do with somebody else's um, criteria or situation, you know, one way or another, maybe he's guided to do what makes him feel good. The feminine is already doing that. That's why I'm not <laughs> talking about us right now. And opening to sentimental feelings which it seems everyone is having, again, with all this light blue. This is all love and emotion. And look, it's an L, like L for love. Be true to you is back. And lastly, get some rest. Um, I think it's like put issues to bed, basically, is what just came to me. So, as I was saying, tie up any loose ends you have. Be true to you is back. I'm going to cut. But I do feel a lot of people aren't moving, like new jobs and um, moving out of your parents' house or moving out of your children's house. Some of us have had that, you know, to go on. Maybe moving in together with somebody for your first time. Maybe that's your first time. Maybe moving into your, your own first apartment. Maybe you're moving to a new job and therefore to a new home as well because you, you know, you're changing places. I see a lot of that. Um, and I've come to family changes, which makes sense in that situation. The dynamic of a family could be changing. And this, again, with the six of water, could 
certainly be like a new addition to, you know, a happy family. It doesn't even, it could be a child, it could be a grandchild even, or some other, it could be a stepchild. It can be like your, your child or, or his child. You're coming together here in the middle. Um, and in that sense, you know, one or the other is sort of becoming a new parent. All of that can be right now. Family changes. The overall energy is keep the faith. top the need to make a decision complex decision the need to do research stop procrastinating is decisions okay that's spirit being funny with us atop the queen of water um is memories so the queen of water can be that person with whom you know we're Parting, perhaps, um, or it can be the way we feel about a situation that we're leaving. Like maybe we didn't hate it, we're just moving on. Like we're promoting ourselves again. For some of us, are moving into a new apartment, a new home. So it's maybe it's an upgrade for you. Maybe you used to live in a studio, now you're getting like you know at least a one bedroom. So that's an upgrade, and you know fond memories of what you're leaving behind, but you're leaving it behind nonetheless. That's the decision you're making. It's like what you want to do. You're voluntarily joining in. Here atop the four of water. And perhaps an offer that you need to consider is self-employment. So maybe, again, this is like leaving. Because I don't know why job keeps coming to mind or and mouth. <laughs> uh, maybe you're leaving an, um, a job that you had here so that you can go into business for yourself. That's the sort of offer you're considering. Like, do I continue with this? And on this path, maybe they're gonna give me a promotion or whatever, but I've really been thinking about, um, maybe because of Jupiter, I've really been thinking about starting my own business, more spiritually based or something like that. So fond memories of from where I'm leaving or, you know, but I'm thinking about going. I'm going to make a decision soon. Feminine. A top strength is spiritual growth. So this, I think, is coming into play because, again, of our, our warrior spirit, sort of that nine of fire um, energy. We have the strength to keep going, even though we, you know, we are growing tired. Our patience is wearing thin in many, many cases. Um, but we're sticking it out, you know. For the sake of this spiritual growth that comes with it. Atop the night of fire is in the Venera. So leaving some stuff beginning, uh, leaving some stuff behind and moving toward um, our new beginnings. Which a new moon brings again. Atop the nine of water and our wishes being granted is motivation. That can be the masculine. It could be like a baby let me be your motivation sort of thing. Um... It could be children, could be new addition to the family. That's our motivation. Ch any other change to family dynamic, that's our motivation. To let something go and to start something new. Crowning here atop the four of fire. Healing from the past. So again, perhaps we're leaving stuff behind. We're moving forward. Entering, and we've completed a project possibly with this. So it could be, the project could be, letting go of our past, letting an, allowing an era to end so that, you know, 
just having the memories, but we're not taking any, anything else with us into the present. We're going to leave the past where it is. And we're healing from it. We're happy now. We're at peace. We're contented. <laughs> Atop the six of water is leaving. So this can be, again, leaving maybe your children's house or your children leaving your house. This can be issues regarding children again. Um, it can be leaving a past life relationship um, that you were forced to revisit in one way or another, even if it was just bumping into each other by Venus retrograde. You're leaving it behind. Okay, it's the end of that era. That's for sure. This could be leaving again a job and moving towards self-employment next to which it sits. The new relationship, the family dynamic, maybe a new baby or something can be your motivation for all of that. At the heart of the matter, atop the moon, <laughs> get some rest. This is putting things to bed. It absolutely is um, with, these, with the energy of the new moon. Lastly, beginning with Durga and boundaries for the feminine, I'm going to get you an, um, an advice card, but like also like an overall energy from the new moon, um, covering the next week or so week, two weeks, what we can expect. And I want you to know, I began with love and Aphrodite and I'm opening to wisdom and Sophia it goes very well with the spiritual growth. Sophia back. And opening to Maya and Illusion, which is a very moon-like card, too. Um, things not always appearing as they seem. Also, very Mercury retrograde type of card, like not falling into assumptions, because, again, things aren't necessarily what they look like they are. Illusion back. Opening to Change and Oya. Yep. And now that's bad. I'm going to cut. to Uzume and laughter. Laughter is the best medicine. This helps us to be able to move on from maybe the fact that we're leaving, leaving an era behind, um, healing from the past, putting things to bed, you know, that have been like on our mind, on our back. It's This has been our nine of, of wands, our 10 of wands for a long time. We're finally putting it all down. Some of it, we didn't even know what it was. You know, some of it was hidden. It was in the dark. The moon had it covered. Things coming to light and just ending. We're done with it. And the overall energy is made and responsibility. And maybe us taking responsibility for our own lives, laying down our boundaries, um, you know, moving into our own. That comes with spiritual growth. Masculine, for you, I'm beginning with Vishnu and balance. And I'm not surprised based on a reading I did, I think, for Saturday. Um, I tried something different while I did the daily readings. I've been doing them like a, a day or two before and setting them to post themselves um, either six, I've been trying 6 a.m. and I've been trying 6 p.m. Um, to see like which works best um, for me and you guys, you know, as a whole, as many of us as possible. Anyway, um, the reading I did, I believe, for Saturday that will post Saturday morning um, Eastern Standard Time for me here in New York at 6 a.m. spoke a lot to issues with the masculine with balance where he himself is concerned about like his inability it seems to remain 
aligned. Like once he finds where he wants to be, it always seems to fall apart and he can't, he can't like hold on to it. He so desperately wants to hold on to that balance and, you know, be strong, remain, not that he's not, but I'm saying I'm talking about how, how, how it came across the masculine feels. He wants to, he wants to be the knight of, of fire. You know, he wants to remain always strong, dependable, you know, reliable, responsible. He's got you. And he finds himself slipping all the time into this, like, oh, I don't feel so good, you know, imbalanced situation. So not surprised to see Vishnu here, who helps us with all of that. Opening to Jizo and support. And not surprised to see that either, because another thing that came out with that balance was the fact that they appreciate, um, you know, when they have it and when they seek it, the support of the feminine, you know, like a shoulder to lean on, because we we help to ground them. All of that came out. Look, I'm, I'm looking forward to you guys seeing it. Um, anyway, opening to a cap and dedication. And now he's the bottom here and lastly Mithras and sacrifice and that's back I'm gonna cut so this is my from my gods and titans um, deck for the masculine it's all um, male gods and titans Garuda and travel, more moving, moving on, moving forward, maybe moving in general, more transportation, um, so more chariot and that quote-unquote moving card and maybe the, even this leaving card that's at our root. This is the overall theme. But it's the overall theme, particularly for the masculine, um, which I, I'm sure you guys have noticed too. So the overall energy from this deck for them is Ra and power. Sort of like what I was just talking about. All right, I'll do the other cards first. Mm, this may be the king of water, who is our overall energy. Um, and or this queen of water that sits here under memories release and death the queen of water can very well represent the sign of scorpio and so that it would give i'm not sure i mentioned you know the meaning in that in that way this can be you know again like death to what was old and like all we're left with is memories we're letting go of everything else um, that has to do with it because the queen of water very well can represent the sign of Scorpio and some say it specifically does. Um, this card certainly does release or death major arcana card number 13, the end of a phase or a situation, spiritual transformation. It's time to move on <laughs> from the angels to the feminine. It's the five of earth fears surrounding money, the wisdom to accept help from others and uncertain self-employment. Um, judging by what's here, there's no other pentacles. I don't think this is fear surrounding money. Um, I don't even think it's abandonment, really. Um, I'm not even getting abandonment from it. It may be the, wis the um, wisdom to accept help from others. And maybe some concerns about, un you know, about self-employment and our motivation to move forward towards something, again, maybe a spiritually based business. We're a little bit fearful of the unknown, as they say. That's what I'm getting. Um, masculine grief work. So this comes with the death, quote unquote death, which is metaphorical. Um, people are sometimes afraid of the death card, but it, it tends not to have anything to do with um, death as in you know a living being ceasing to you know exist in that form that's not what it means <laughs> it means like letting go of old things and make giving way to new which is what we're going to be doing with the moon um which is what we're supposed to do with a new moon let go of old stuff give way to new and you're doing that again with this queen of 
uh, water that's underneath the memories card and you're doing that with the release or death card that is in your advice. So this is just further to that. Um, supporting your decision to let go of the old stuff. This is spirit, you know, like saying to you, it's okay. And sort of comforting you in that moment of whatever you have to let go. Because some stuff, again, some things, people, you will have fine memories. Even in these marriages that are ending, you know, even if it got bad, you know, this one, I cheated on you, you cheated on me. You know, you couldn't support me. You didn't, you didn't support my ideas. You didn't support my goals, my dreams, you know, whatever the stuff that happens in marriages or we just grew apart, you know, you're more like an associate than my wife or my husband, whatever the case is. That doesn't mean that there were never good times, <laughs> you know, about which you're going to have fond memories. So sometimes that involves grief work, especially if there's children. Again, getting back to the six of water that's under here. If you're leaving a person behind um, and it's the parent of your child or something, or even if it's like a, a step parent, you had a, um, you know, however your family dynamic was set up, um, you know, that it doesn't matter. <laughs> step, adopted, whatever. If you're leaving somebody behind that's been part of your structure, there's grief, potential grief involved in that. And that's okay. There's sentimental feelings. So we've got some too, because again, feminine, we're leaving stuff behind too. The, uh, for the masculine, it seems a lot more clear cut exactly what he's doing. Um, a, a little less defined for us, but we clearly letting some things go as well. Sentimental feelings. From the four agreements, they say to the masculine, your best will depend on whether you are refreshed in the morning or tired at night. Your best will be different when you are happy as opposed to upset or healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstances, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Yeah, this is telling you to let go of the um, any four of cups energy masculine and, you know, not blame yourself for anything, not seek into sink into, um, you know, this grief or whatever. Again, remember that you're being held up, you're being supported by the universe. Um, and it's just a matter of circumstance. It's part of life. And we're just letting these things go. And you did your best. You're going to continue to do your best. That's why you're making these decisions instead of just letting things, you know, exist and continue and happen on their own. You're taking charge. You're making decisions. You're making moves. You're moving. Moving. Feminine. Ugh. Come on. <laughs> Find the courage to ask for what you want. Maybe that has to do with this five of earth. I think combined with the fire energy. Others have the right to tell you yes or no. Right. We don't know what the answer is going to be. We might fear the unknown because we're somewhere here in the middle with this five. It could go either way. Yes, no, 50-50. But you always have the right to ask. And likewise, everybody has the right to ask you for what they want. And you have the right to say yes or no, too. So what's my motivation, basically? All right, lastly, from the Gods and Titans, I like this. Wow, masculine. I got to show you this, really. Um, Sheba the Destroyer. So you have this. You have death and all the other cards that we saw about moving forward, moving on, moving up. This is Shiva the Destroyer comes through to knock everything down, to basically kill everything and then regrow it. That's exactly what this release or death or Scorpio energy does. It sort of gets rid of everything, clears everything out so that it can be born completely anew. This is death and rebirth together. That's what Sheba the Destroyer is all about as well. Death to everything. I'm knocking all this crap down and I'm going to build it brand new. Those are awesome for you. And, <laughs> and that's how you I started with Aphrodite and love. So like, you know, let's stay positive, feminine. So we have a lot of really awesome crap to look forward to <laughs> over the next week or so, week or two, in my opinion. Just like, 
it's kind of all over the place in some ways, but at the end of the day, really, really awesome. All right, so I'm going to read you guys, Masculine, about Shiva. I opened right to him, too. How awesome is that? Shiva, the destroyer. Destruction. Dance away any old beliefs that burden you. Defy and destroy what stands in your way to happiness and enlightenment. The Lord Shiva comes dancing into your earthly plane in many forms and has many faces, but his role as Shiva the destroyer is what we will examine here. Shiva is the third aspect of the Hindu trinity. Brahma is the creator and Vishnu is the preserver. While some fear the idea of destruction, similar to how I was saying we fear the energy of death, it is important to see this action as part of the natural continuing cycle of all things and in some ways a relief from the burden of suffering. Yes, we're getting rid of an old energy, stale, old job, old relationship, old marriage, old friend, you know, it doesn't work anymore. Old situa old living situation, you know, with whomever, um, in whatever way whatever size home or apartment or style we're getting rid of all of that because we were suffering through it there is nothing extra with shiva all that is not real is destroyed you know the only thing that is real love yet there is the essential masculine energy left for his connection with parvati his wife death to it and the memories left Shiva is often pictured stepping out on on the demon of ignorance as he disassembles what is not needed by letting go of old beliefs and false identities we become freer and in the end more enlightened. If Shiva has entered your life, you may need to disrupt or to get rid of something that is not working and is holding you back. Negative thoughts, insecurities, and having little faith in yourself could be stopping you from achieving something you want. Okay, I talked about that with the balance card, how the masculine feels. So masculine, pay attention here. It may be time to destroy those ideas and to rebalance yourself again shiva worshipers in india are among the most wild looking of all yogis covered in ash and with ungroomed hair if you ever visit india you can see them tending their sacred fires shadow side most of us have been caught in a cycle of self-destruction at some time in our lives it may have been a as harmless as a pattern of procrastination or it may have been worse, substance addiction or associating with people who were not good for us. Sometimes we allow too much destruction of the health of our bodies or even our physical environment. Pay attention to where in life destructiveness may be playing its part and destroy only that which is unneeded. Feminine. I open right to love and Aphrodite. Love. All right. When I open my heart, I am filled with delight, so profound, with ecstasy, so sweet, with pleasure, so deep. The connecting with my beloved takes me to all the places and the union. The union plays rhapsodies in my soul. I can achieve union when I achieve oneness with myself. I can dance partnership when I dance alone. I can love another when I can love myself. Mythology. Aphrodite, ancient Mediterranean mother goddess, traveled to Greece when the Greeks colonized Canaan. The Greeks say Aphrodite was born of the union of the sky and the fertile sea womb when she castrated the penis of the former sky god Uranus and he fell into the ocean. Although traditionally revered in all her multi 
aspects, including battle, the Greeks, in their effort to assimilate her, relegated her to a love goddess. When she arrived at Olympus, Zeus, the chief god, married her to Hephaestus, the lame god of smithcraft. So you can see how this ties into Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, um, so it's the other form of Aphrodite. And Venus was married to the lame god of the forge. So this is the lame god of the smithcraft, same thing. And the, the, of course, the castrated penis is Isis. So to go even higher, um, when um, King Osiris's penis was castrated after his death, you know, post-mortem, as they say, his penis was cut off um, and did fall into the ocean and was thrown into the ocean and eaten by a fish. So this just ties all those quote-unquote myths together. However, Isis and Osiris is no myth. Um, there's huge, huge, the largest of all uh, tombs and things for Osiris and um, Isis in Egypt. But that's another story. Anyway, um, her husband, Aphrodite's husband, made her exquisite jewelry, but she preferred the passionate Ares, god of war, in her bed. Meaning of the card, Aphrodite is here with her dance of love, inviting you to luxuriate, bask, and revel in love for yourself. Do you spend the day without thinking or saying how much you love yourself? Do you do little loving things for yourself? Or are you miserably keeping yourself on a diet of starvation rations? Do you listen to your needs in a loving, respectful way? Or do you criticize yourself for balking at the schedule you keep? For complaining about the job you hate. For bemoaning the relationship you endure. Now is the time to love yourself. Aphrodite says, to be able to love another, you must be able to love yourself. Be exactly as they are. So we don't try to change people. It means witnessing yourself and your loved ones with love, amusement, and delight. The amount of space we can allow another is dependent on the amount of space we can allow ourselves. Wholeness is achieved when we can hold infinite space and patience for ourselves first and then extend it to others. And I always say we have to be um, whole on our own before we're allowed to merge with the other. I hope that you guys enjoyed our moon reading. Namaste, angels.